This is the last warning to the bears before Tesla's earnings report. Here in this video, I will go over my final prediction on Tesla's earnings, what I expect to happen with Tesla stock following earnings, and what my position currently is heading into Tesla's earnings. The good, the potential bad, and everything else in between, we need to go over here in this video as tomorrow and after hours, we're going to be getting Tesla's Q2 earnings. And let me tell you right now, the short sellers heading into Tesla's earnings are panicking. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get into it, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to stay up to date with everything happening every single day with Tesla stock as well as the broader markets and hopefully make more money, hit that subscribe button as well as the like button. Now let's go ahead and get straight into it. The first thing that I want to start this video off with is auto gross margins. Probably the thing that most of you guys are sick of hearing the most. Now, auto gross margins, when this number comes out, that is what is going to cause that big initial reaction from the market makers. Market makers are typically the ones that get the earnings first and send the stock up crazy up and down. As you guys have probably seen many times, that's how earnings tend to be. That first big initial reaction. Depending on that reaction, you could get an opposite reaction. We've seen plenty of times where Tesla will rally and then fall or fall and then rally back to life. And then you get that sustained move after that. Auto gross margins. That's what the market makers are going to be looking for. Now, Dan Ives. Even one of the most bullish analysts on Tesla expects auto gross margins of 17.5%. Your auto gross margins in Q1 was 19%. I disagree with Dan Ives. I think auto gross margins are going to come in better than Q1. And I think this is a possibility due to Tesla cutting hours and laying off employees in Q2, which is sad to say it sucks to say but that's the reality of the corporate world also the business getting better and more efficient tesla is very much a business where over time it gets more and more efficient that's why margins have improved so steadily over the years now ford we just seen ford cutting the price of the f-150 lightning and a lot of analysts say that Ford really doesn't have any competition for trucks besides the Rivian and soon to be the Cybertruck. There should be no reason why they are cutting prices. Ford says it's because their raw mineral costs have fallen so much that they can offset their costs to consumers, meaning they can cut prices and keep their margins. Well, Tesla likely seen the same situation in Q2 play out as Ford, but probably on steroids. So meaning we're probably going to get better boost to margins. Now, the biggest thing that makes me disagree with Dan Ives. During Q1 of 2023, Tesla slashed all of their bonuses for all of their employees. A lot of your higher end corporate executives did not get those bonuses. Some of your smaller workers in the factories seen substantially smaller bonuses than they have seen in years. Well, now in Q2, Tesla has given out the highest bonuses they have ever given out. I don't think it's very logical that if Tesla's margins fell from 19% last quarter to 17.5% this quarter, that they would be giving out bonuses twice as large with falling margins. That is one thing that analysts don't pick up on because they get analysis paralysis. They're looking at other different things. Like you really don't think raw material costs falling over 60% from Q4 is going to have any effect to Tesla's margins now? Yeah, of course it is. But analysts, they don't get it. And that's why they're short on Tesla. And that's why they're about to lose big time when Tesla stock rallies. And we'll talk about how high Tesla stock could rally if different scenarios do ultimately play out coming tomorrow. But even if, rest assured, Auto gross margins come in at 18% or 
something smaller than what we've seen last quarter, that doesn't matter as much as where the guidance is from Tesla on where margins are going to go. The only thing markets care about more than what's happening today is what's going to happen tomorrow. That is going to be the main key. If Elon says to expect more price cuts in the future, that they are willing to cut margins even more, then it's not going to matter if margins are 20% for this quarter. Markets are going to say, hey, margins are going to be smaller in the future, and they would sell off Tesla stock. I think that is one of the concerns that you should have even as a bull heading into Tesla's earnings is Elon. That's the wild card factor that we just don't know. If Elon says, hey, price cuts are coming or the economy is not looking so good or demand is slowing down, those things are just things that we cannot foreshadow in videos such as these. But I don't expect the raw numbers and the raw margins meaning the profit margins, the auto gross margins, and the top line revenue numbers are going to miss expectations. I think they're actually going to come in much better than expectations. And my official prediction for Tesla's earnings is 92 cents of EPS. Analysts currently expect 82 cents of EPS. So this would be Tesla beating on that net profit margin overall. And I expect revenue to come in at 24.8 billion. Analysts are currently expecting around $24.4 billion, so about $400 million better on the top line as well. Again, I would like to think that beating EPS and beating revenue would matter, but again, it's all going to be about future guidance. According to Barron's, these are the things that will affect Tesla stock the most. Tesla's capacity. So Tesla has the capacity to produce 2 million to 2.5 million vehicles a year at their four assembly plants in California, Texas, Shanghai, and Berlin. Investors don't expect the company to stop there. The company has already announced plans for a plant in Mexico. See, on Elon Musk recently hinted at an investment in India. What's more, the Wall Street Journal reported Tuesday that Tesla plans to double the size of its German plant. So Tesla can produce in between two and two and a half million vehicles every year, presumably for 2023 as well. Well, Elon gave us guidance of about 1.8 million deliveries for 2023 if tesla raises guidance that is going to be a huge positive for tesla's stock price the speed and cost at which tesla can expand its manufacturing footprint will be a topic of discussion on wednesday's earnings call that will begin at 5 30 p.m eastern time the Mexico plant should eventually produce a new, smaller, low price vehicle often referred to investors as the Model 2. This is the vehicle that can sell for between $20,000 and $25,000. This is your mass market vehicle that would basically beat out your combustible engine vehicles brand new off the lot. So this is a pretty big deal. Now, Elon could give us guidance on this Mexico plant. If we do get guidance and somewhat of a timeline on when deliveries could start, that could send Tesla stock to all-time highs pretty damn quickly. And I expect some kind of commentary on this, but it's hard to tell how far Elon will go as far as future assumptions and, and production dates and when they expect a Mexico factory to be online and ready to start actually producing and delivering vehicles such as the Model 2. The Cybertruck will also be a big deal, and according to Barron's, the first Cybertruck, which wasn't a prototype, was produced over this weekend. A lot of people have kind of been throwing their opinions out there that this is another prototype, this is the first Tesla Cybertruck that is available to be delivered. We'll see, ultimately, I'm sure we get more guidance. Now, Wall Street is projecting 10,000 Cybertruck deliveries for 2023. If we get guidance to any more than 10,000 deliveries, well, earnings estimates will have to rise. The Tesla Supercharger Network, Barron says, has, has made tidal waves in this latest quarter, and that is true. That is a big reason why Tesla really went from that 240 level to where we are today. Part and part was due to the deals for the Supercharger Network. Now, a lot of people are confused how this would benefit Tesla just besides the government giving out that $7.5 billion, essentially free money, to the leader of the Supercharger Network. 
whoever is the leader is going to get that money. They're going to be able to build out their supercharger network. And obviously that winner is Tesla. Now, how can Tesla monetize the superchargers? And what could this look like in the mid to long term? That's going to be important as that will affect earnings estimates as well. Battery storage numbers could surprise investors as well. Tesla deployed 3,889 megawatt hours of battery storage in the first quarter, a record and up 360% year over year. This is going to be a very big deal. As we reported today, Massachusetts alone just cleared a $413 million contract for Tesla's mega packs, and they're creating basically two big facilities for all of these to go into for the whole entire state to achieve its 80 percent target or of of one gigawatt uh, hour energy storage deployment this target is set for 2025 so massive deals that we're seeing even being done today what does forward-looking guidance and commentary from tesla look like as far as energy and storage now a lot of you and I know that energy and storage could become one of Tesla's largest, if not the largest component to Tesla's business over time. AI will also be a big topic of discussion on the earnings call. The robot business is still a ways down the road, but that won't stop investors from dreaming about robot potential as well as any updates to full self-driving and when we could expect that level 4 or level 5 full self-driving. Elon has said by the end of this year, he expects to essentially have vehicles out on the road that can drive from point A to point B without you ever touching the steering wheel or looking at the road. Obviously, you should not do that, but that's Elon's claim. So we'll see how much of that is foreshadowed to us on the earnings call. These are all things that could be big positives for Tesla's stock price. Now, a lot of your analysts, especially if you ask your bearish analysts, are expecting things such as, Auto gross margins could be as low as 15% and full self-driving is not coming this year. The Cybertruck's not coming this year. A lot of your analysts are pretty dang bearish on the things that we just mentioned. Now, I think there's a lot of room to upset those expectations. And I expect a lot of bullish commentary. I expect, expect delivery estimates to be raised closer to about 2 million vehicles by the end of this year. And I expect those auto gross margins to come in better than expectations, potentially even as high as 20% again. If that happens, Tesla stock likely pretty shortly after that rises to about $350 per share. That is my kind of estimate. That's what I think is going to happen. That's how I'm positioning in my portfolio. That's the specific trade I have on Tesla. It could yield out 20 grand if Tesla closes above 350 uh, a week or two from today or maybe three weeks from today. We'll look at the exact trade towards the end of this video. That would be a rally of about 20% from here. Tesla could easily do that tomorrow after earnings. Tesla could actually hit new all-time highs if, if this best case scenario is actually realized. I wouldn't count on that, but that's a possibility. That would be an increase of about 40% from here. But ultimately, your biggest risk coming tomorrow, and I hate that I have to say this, again, is Elon. If Elon says something that investors don't like, he does not raise guidance, he actually lowers the lower end range. He says demand is waning and that we should expect price cuts in the future and lower auto margins. Even if he tries to justify that, the markets are not going to like it. So I don't think the EPS number or the revenue number is, 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 is going to be a reason for Tesla to fall. I think that's going to come in much better than expectations. That's going to be a positive. But coming on the earnings call, if Elon gives us bad guidance, that is the one thing that I can foresee right now that would cause investors to freak out in Tesla stock. That's what could cause the downside. Something else that is really a wild card for 
Tesla's earnings that I am extremely bullish on long term is advertising. Now, as you can see right here, Tesla started to advertise in different ways. They've taken out slots in magazines. They have advertised on Google, not just for Tesla's, but for energy storage as well. That has been another big part of Tesla's advertising budget per se that they have been pushing out there is the vehicles as well as energy storage. Now, if Elon gives us guidance of advertising is having a great impact to Tesla, that is something that is 100% not priced into Tesla stock. I personally expect, as I've said before, advertising alone could increase Tesla's backlog, meaning we could start to see a lot more pre-orders than Tesla's that Tesla can actually make of, of their specific models, the Model 3, the Model Y, the S and X, as well as the Cybertruck, this could grow Tesla's order book by 2 to 5x within a year from now. Because simply put, a lot of people don't know about Tesla. If you went on to a busy part of, of just your city and asked people, what's the Cybertruck, for an example? Most people are not going to know what you're talking about. Now, if you ask people what's the Model 3 or the Model Y, most people are not going to know what you're talking about. But if you go ask someone, what's a Chevy Silverado? <laughs> They're going to say it's a truck. You say, who makes it? They're probably going to say GM. My point proven. A lot of people don't know about Tesla. Or if they do know Tesla, they don't know about the products. And I think this is a big potential catalyst for Tesla's stock. I think advertising is going to be massive in the longer term. If we get clarity and new details on this, this could be big on Tesla's earnings. 100% not priced in from the bears or the bulls that we get news on advertising tomorrow. Now, as we have previously mentioned in this video, Tesla announced today, or really per the filings out of Berlin, Tesla is trying to expand the capacity of Berlin to 1 million vehicles per year from 500,000 vehicles per year, double the capacity to produce these vehicles, but they also want to double the capacity for 50 gigawatt hours annually to 100 gigawatt hours annually as far as battery and storage production. So not only are they trying to make advancements with their capacity to produce tesla cars to be making this bold step in energy and storage as well like we seen today the deals that they are making that could only be the surface and if we get new announcements on that as well on earnings that could also be a very big deal the number of employees could also rise from what we see currently of around 10,000 to possibly 22,500, Tesla said today. Elon Musk did not give a timeline for the project. Again, something that we will be waiting to hear from tomorrow on the earnings call. Some of your major Wall Street banks, including Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, are also suggesting that Tesla could create its own financing arm to help get more people into their vehicles. Presumably, as interest rates have also risen, this would be a good time to do so to, again, get more people into Teslas, maybe be able to offer a more attractive interest rate if you cut out the middleman. This actually happened from GM in 1919, and it was the brainchild of GM President Alfred P. Sloan for a way for customers to buy cars without having a lot of upfront cash. Now, this was necessary for GM at the time, and this did wonders for their business afterwards, probably a main reason why GM is still around today. Tesla, it's time. And if we get announcements on this upcoming earnings report or earnings call, maybe I should say, of Tesla's independent financing arm, this could also be a very bullish, unexpected catalyst for Tesla stock. As I reported in the last video, if Tesla's earnings come in as I expect and we get good guidance and maybe some new initiatives like the Tesla financing arm, some news on advertising that is bullish, a uh, raise of guidance for Tesla, well, short sellers are in, a, are in a very bad position. Let's just say how it is. Short sellers are fucked at this point, okay? Short sellers 
currently have short positions worth $27.67 billion. This is the highest level that you have seen in the last 18 months. In the last three months, this has grown 69%. 69%. Short sellers over the past five trading days have lost close to $4 billion. If we see a big jump on earnings, they can't stay in their short positions. They're going to have to cover. And this is a big reason why I think Tesla stock could jump to 350, if not all-time highs, based on what is said with earnings. That is not the only story, though. There's a lot of option positioning as well, with almost 800 hedge fund and institutional orders here on the day worth $458.24 million, with a positive order value of 71%. In the last week, you have seen 3,500 orders totaling $1.63 billion with a positive order value of 70%. Some of the largest option expirations for this Friday is that $300 call with 78,000 contracts trading hands today. The 290 call with 60,000 contracts trading hands. The 330 call, the 350 call, the 320 call, the 315 call. All of these seeing over 20,000 for volume here on the day. This is very bullish. Look how big these green circles, just, just, okay. Look how big these green circles are compared to the red ones. The calls are so much larger than the puts here. So as I previously mentioned, Tesla stock could go to about $350 per share pretty easily after earnings. That's a 20% rally. Anything over $350, you're probably getting into short squeeze, gamma squeeze territory, and it's hard to tell where things could go, but it would be reasonable to see all-time highs if we get a lot of good things announced at Tesla's earnings. Now, if things are negative and for whatever reason the stock falls, 240 would be that level that I would watch. 250 is going to be a good level of support as well as 265. But if things are just negative, you could fall back to that 240 level. In that case, that would be a true and true buy the dip opportunity. Now, as far as my actual trade that I have currently on Tesla, Full disclosure purposes, I will show you. This is the only option trade that I currently have on Tesla. I bought the 345 and the 350 call debit spreads, meaning you go to the option chain, you buy the 345, and you sell the 350 calls. Your max gain is $500 per every one of these you have open. So I have 20 of these open. My max gain is around $20,000, right? Right? So, in that case, I paid $20 a piece. They're currently going for $36 a piece. At 3.50 p.m. today, they were going for $42 a piece. This was up over 100%. Currently, it's up 80%. I'll probably trim out this position. I'll probably sell half. I'll probably ride half through whatever's free, whatever position I can make free um, out of this position. And I'll call it a day. It expires July 28th. So I have my money on exactly what I'm saying in this video, exactly what I expect to happen. Now, if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time every time I make a trade, if you so choose to, I'm not a financial advisor, you could lose money. Link down below in the description of this video. If you have questions anytime, 24-7, seven days a week, you want to ask me questions or you want to learn something or whatever it is. That's somewhere where you can actually communicate with with me and with other members and grow and hopefully grow those portfolios as well. So that is going to do it for this video. I think we covered a lot. Long story short, I think the shorts are screwed. Let me know what you think about Tesla's earnings down below in the comment section. Again, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel on your way out of this video. Enjoy the rest of your day, most importantly, and I will see you in the next one.